let me welcome you to the eighth lecture of drilling and blasting technology. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss about the mechanism of rock breakage while we are carrying out drilling. But like every uh, class, let us retrospect our previous lecture. Uh, previously, we are accustomed with the different physical and mechanical properties of rocks. Uh, we have also understood the influence of these properties on the drilling of rocks. Uh, however, these influences also dependent on the type of drilling and its application. So, what we will do in this, this class, we will mostly discuss about the theories of rock drilling that means, how in uh, during our drilling we are uh, failing the rock and the mechanics of that rock breakage while we are applying force from the drill steel or drill bit. So, this is our learning objective we will try to understand these things in this lecture. So, first uh, before understanding the mechanism first let us have some look into the drilling methods. Basically, the system of drilling may be carried out in differ different way. First is the mechanical one. First is the mechanical one, where we provide mechanical force using some drill bit or drill steel, so that on repeated hammering or repeated abrasion the rocks can fail. There are other systems in our mostly drilling while we carry out for our blasting purpose. This is the most common one, the mechanical drilling system we use for drilling a hole in the rock mass. Apart from that, there are other drilling systems where thermal behavior of the rock is utilized for fragmenting the rock, here flame, plasma, hot fluids, freezing, these technologies are adopted. It can be hydraulic force can be used for uh, piercing the rock, fragmenting the rock. So, these are basically different where cavitation and erosion is carried out for creating a hole. Seismic is carried out where the seismic energy or the wave propagation is utilized for fracturing the rock uh, and creating a hole. Hole can be created chemically where uh, uh, the rock is uh, uh, made soluble with the chemical and take it out for creating a cavity. Electrically rock can be allowed to be fragmented by electrical arc, magnetic induction. In fact, microwave techniques are also used for that laser cutting also be carried out and nuclear fission and fusion is also carried out, but these technologies are not commonly used in drilling, in drilling for blasting purpose. However, some of these technologies are utilized for rock excavation where rock are fractured prior to excavate from the uh, in situ. In those cases, these are the technology thermal hydraulic mining, uh, seismic fracturization or seismic fracturing uh, in case of uh, gas uh, extracting uh, these chemicals where uh, some mining is carried out uh, by chemical uh, 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 chemical solutions. Uh, these are commonly used in rock excavation purpose, but not for our drilling purpose. So, in drilling for blasting purpose mostly we use uh, this mechanical drilling and we will discuss about this one in our future slides. However, at the end of this drilling part, we will try to discuss some of the special techniques of drilling. In those cases, some of these techniques will be also discussed. Now, let us understand how we are mechanically carrying out the drilling. The mechanical orientation, this is uh, carried out say there is an enormous variety of possible rock drilling system in mining and civil engineering and uh, exclusively it is carried out by using the mechanical energy this we have already discussed. This mechanical energy from the drill to the rock is transferred basically from two by two way one is by percussion or by rotary action. And using where we use both the system, there we use hybrid system which is called rotary percussive. 
basically uh, none of these systems are stand alone all the rotary drills are basically carrying out rotary action under a very little percussive action all the percussive drills are carrying majorly percussive action a little rotary action and in rotary percussive drill that is hybrid drill carrying most both the action uh, in a major manner but always the percussive in rotary percussive percussive is the major action carried out for drilling purpose so let us see about the theory of penetration drilling involves disintegration of the rock mass where the bit and rock are interacting bit is basically fracturing the rock under the percussive or rotary action and the effectiveness of drilling is measured as the rate of penetration of the bit that means the speed at which the bit is traveling inside the rock mass. So, basically the bit will travel in the rock mass very fast if the energy transfer is efficient. So, basically drilling is basically the bit the bit and rock energy transfer between the bit and rock interface which is very very important in the drilling. So, now let us look further details of this. If you see the drill machine, drill machine basically comprising three things. First is the drill that is the machine, second one is the drill steel that means the energy developed in the mouth of this drill machine is transferred to the bit through this drill steel and bit is the element which is interacting with the rock to fracture the rock. So, basically bit is acting, drill is generating the power and drill steel is the transmitter. So, drill is, is the source of energy, drill steel is the transmitter of the energy and bit is the applicator of the energy. And we need another thing along with this main one that is auxiliary one, but this is very very important that is the circulation fluid. It is important because the purpose of circulation fluid is to clean the hole that means whatever fractured rock is there that fractured rock has to be taken out from the drill hole. So, we have to clean the hole. So, circulating fluid is basically cleaning the hole. This is also suppressing the dust as it is a fluid and this also cool down the bit as the repeated hammering action or the rotary action the temperature on the bit is trying to increase a lot the purpose of this circulation fluid is to cool down this uh, bit so that the temperature of the bit will remain less and the disintegration or the fracturing of the bit material will not occur. So, that is why this circulation fluid is very very important in the drilling. Now, let us look into this video. Uh, this video basically will give you some idea here a rotary drill normal uh, handheld drill which is used in the household uh, purpose that drill is used to drill a an wooden piece. So, you just look into that you just look into this Have uh, you ever thought video, how the holes uh, are made so in a workpiece without damaging it. Uh, to understand drill this, machine, let us how consider it is ca uh, uh, carrying out the and drilling. Point on it, so, there yeah. basically this is the drilling of the, uh, uh, the wood under a household machine and uh, this is a complete rotary drill machine. So, <coughs> you can uh, see it. So, that is the machine, this is the drill steel, in the mouth of the drill steel the rotational part that is the bit is there. So, these are two point now let us rotate the hand lever manually 
This makes the rotating tool to move linearly towards the wooden block until the tool gets touched to the block. As we rotate the so lever first further, is given we see that the tool is the rotary action, the wooden, block. the wooden blocks are we cutting into the, the pieces. You can the see the, the cut pieces are coming out. Uh, you see, in this case, there is no circulation fluid, only by as it is a short length drilling and it is manually operated. So, that is why the wooden pieces are coming out in the rotary action only, cut pieces are coming out in the rotary action only, no circulation fluid is available in this case. So, basically you can understand uh, the drill is basically the prime mover which is the source of the energy. It converts the energy from its original form which may be hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical, diesel anything into the mechanical energy either by percussive, percussive or rotary. So, either it is giving a percussive action like this or it is giving a rotary action like this or both. So, basically drill is converting the prime energy into the mechanical energy in form of either percussion or rotary action. Then the next one is the drill steel. So, drill steel is the basically the drill rod which is transferring the energy in same and equal manner to the drill bit which is the applicator. And the next one is the bit which is applying this energy to the rock. That means, if it is a percussive energy, so drill bit is basically hammering the rock. If it is the rotary energy, then drill bit is abrasing the rock at on its point of contact. Now, fracturing is fracturing of rock by the drill is basically influencing by four major properties. You can see the first is the drill bit and its geometry, second one is the applied thrust and its rotational speed that means the rotary force, abrasive force, applied thrust means the percussive force, flushing medium is how fast we are taking out the cut pieces and finally, the rock properties. Basically, if you look into this, the first three are controllable that means, we can change we can uh, choose our drill machine, we can choose our drill bit, we can choose our drill steel, we can choose our uh, flushing media, we can increase or decrease the uh, force of the drill, uh, drill bit uh, by uh, manually operating our uh, drill machine. So, these are controllable parameter for us, however, we cannot change the rock because this is in situ and it is uncontrollable we have to drill a hole in that media whether we like it or not we cannot change this media. So, basically we have to select a suitable drill machine or we have to select these properties in the drill machine. So, that we can achieve the faster drilling rate. So, basically drillability is the drillability of the rock is defining it is how easy to drill a rock. And we there is a drillability index which defining the drillability of the rock under different condition rotary or percussive or rotary percussive condition. Uh, performance of the drill machine uh, also helps in setting up norms for drilling operations and in estimate, estimating the cost of the excavation and it further assists the estimating the average life expectancies of the uh, beads and the uh, drill steels. So, basically drillability index, drillability index is defining all these uh, requirements from which we can assess or we can estimate the penetration rate, we can estimate the cost of drilling and accordingly we can be, uh, we can be uh, choose, we can choose our uh, drill machine for our requirements. Now, let us see the uh, theory of mechanical method of rock breakage. Uh, generally, the during the drilling rock is mostly 
fractured in percussion drilling or in rotary drilling or in rotary percussive drilling. Okay. So, this basic mechanism for the percussive drilling is the percussion penetration which is nothing but the hammering and fragmenting the rock, fracturing the rock. Then the pressure roller which basically uh, abras ab abrasive uh, 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 fails the rock on abrasion and finally, the cutting of the rock. So, basically these three actions are considered while we are selecting a drill tool considering the percussive drilling bit, rotor roller disc, studded roller disc cutter, rotary tricone bit or drag tools. The first action is basically push that is hammering carried out by percussion. Second action is penetration which is the indentation we have already discussed in your indentation test. Third one is the breaking which is carried out. So, the rocks this is basically we are converting our different force to the failure of the rock in the application part. So, if you look into this, this is a percussive, this is a percussive action carried out on the rock and in this case, this portion the rock is fragmented or crushed. In the percussive roller, this is you can see this is a disc cutter disc cutter this percussive roller is basically crush the or cut the rock in the mouth where the fracturing is occurred in the sharp nose of the roller cutter and here the shearing is carried out cutting of the carried out using the drag drag type of bits. Now, let us see the phase of uh, penetration of the uh, rock. Say so, while we are carrying out percussing, uh, uh, percussive action, that time basically it is carried out in three phases. First is the crushed zone. Say so, the moment for the first percussion is carried out at this position. So, this portion of rock fails under high hammering action and crushed and crushed into almost a powdery form. So, first the tool tips begin to dent the rock surface, stress grows with the increasing load and material is elastically deformed in this part. Then at the contact surface irregularities are immediately formed, a zone of crushed rock powders are developed beneath the indenter. So, the moment indenter is pressing the rock that time the initial portion the rock fails under compression to a powdery form. Then the crushed core comprises numerous micro cracks that pulverize the rock into the powder and extremely small particles. So, about 70 to 80 percent of the indenter work is consumed by this formation of the crush zone. So, initial in hammering the most of the energy is consumed by this, then in the rest part the force is transmitted to the through the rock and that forms the that forms the cracks in the outer world. So, as the process continue dominant cracks begin to form in the rock in the outside after this the cracks are formed after the crushed area and this initial stage is restrict, uh, restricted the growth as energy barrier to full propagation. The placement of major cracks depend on the indenter shape generally the dominant placement of major cracks with blunt indenters such as sphere is located just outside the contact area pointing down and away from the surface. So, from the crushed area 
the crack propagation to the outer direction is carried out in this phase. Then the crack starting propagating as energy barrier has been overcome and it propagates spontaneously and rapidly in the all direction and at a lower depth than the contact dimension the tensile driving force falls below that necessary to maintain growth. Thus the crack again becomes stable and the crack is then said to be well developed. So, around that a well developed around the crust zone crack is widened propagated then propagated of propagation of the crack continues finally it became stable after the well development of the cracks. Then chipping action comes when the load as we are also increasing this load as we are trying to forcing this inside this through our thrust. So, this load is increasing and reaches a sufficient level rock breaks into one or more large chips. So, this cracks cracks generated here that breaks in the large chips and formed by the which are formed by the lateral cracks propagating from this beneath. So, these are the propagation and this chips is, chips is formed and this process is called surface chipping. So, this is basically surface chip, chipping occurs each time a chip is formed the force temporarily drops and must be built up to a new higher level to achieve the chipping. So, the moment one chip is coming out as you know the new uh, formation of cracks or new formation of the uh, surface area new surface area consume energy. So, basically formation of one chip that is coming out it is basically the relief of energy and again the next chip will come out when the again the thrust will be build up on the tip of the bit. So, if you uh, look into this figure this is the leap frogging process at the tip of the indenter occurs as it penetrates the rock surface. So, this this one is for the soft rock this one is little bit hard rock this is of very hard and brittle material and you can see every time one chip is coming out some penetration is achieved it drops its force again it the force build up in the tip of the uh, bit. So, from this figure uh, we can understand few things first the fact one from the figure it shows that the load penetration curves for each sub rising section have substantially the same slope. That means, the uh, when the load is built up the strain generated on the rock is is having similar slope and with the increasing penetration depth it is a nearly constant when unit load is increased. Next the dropping sections of the curves are in relation to the stiffness of the loading machine and it is not always fully dependent on the rocks. So, basically this dropping sections depends on the machine also depends on the property of the rock also. These are the first fact. Next, next let us look into the second fact. In the second fact you can see the bottom angle of the crater this bottom angle of the crater which is called natural breaking angle formed by crushing and chipping. So, this part is cracked uh, crushed this part is chipped. So, this crushed part this chipped part are almost within a range of about 120 degree to 150 degree. So, the angle formed this angle formed is having almost a, uh, a, a, a region of 120 degree to 145 150 degree and if you look into this next slide you will find out the 
uh, this angle measured by the those Chinese uh, coal industry a uh, press for different material you can see this angle is for soft cell is, is this is 116 degree clay cell 128 degree limestone 116 degree soft limestone uh, soft sandstone 130 degree hard 144 degree uh, basalt 46 degree quartzite uh, 150 degree uh, in in this sense we can guess this has some uh, link maybe with the brittleness of the material uh, but more research is required on this dependency of this angle with the material property so let us uh, stop at this point uh, in this uh, lecture we will continue drilling in the next class also thank you